Dear friends, good morning. I am Regina Mlinas. Uh, last couple of uh, classes, uh, we have learned about uh, that aerodynamic force and the last class we learned uh, rolling resistance. How the rolling resistance is impact on uh, the electrical mo vehicle movement. So in this today's lecture, uh, we are going to learn the remaining dynamic effect of electrical vehicle. So within this today's lecture, uh, we are concluding all the dynamic effects of electrical vehicle. So let me share my presentation. I hope uh, you can see my screen. Uh, screen. Then today uh, we are going to learn what is mean by gradient force, how will be the impact on that electrical vehicle and uh, due to the weight, how it will be. Then second one, other uh, force, uh, forces, linear acceleration and angular acceleration. Finally, what are the tractive effect and how the tractive effect has to overcome all the forces. So as like as, as I already explained in the previous lecture, aerodynamic force and uh, rolling resistance force and uh, this uh, gradient force are all the negative forces and opposing force are opposing force and linear acceleration and angular acceleration is the aiding forces. So first me, let me explain that about the concept of gradient force. When the car is moving in the flat surface, what will happen? Forces due to the weight of vehicle, which will be act along the towards the downwards. Whatever when I have explained that uh, uh, rolling resistance also, I have explained the same thing. There is a center of uh, gravity, and so that due to the weight of the vehicle, the forces due to the weight of the vehicle, it will be acted towards down. There is no other parameters. It will be affecting this. F is equal to m in the g. M is nothing but mass in kilogram, G is nothing but acceleration due to gravity. So this is the normal cases and uh, this, this is the normal cases when the vehicle is moving in the flat surface. At the same time, when the vehicle is moving the inclined at position or if the vehicle is climbing the hill, that angle of force acting on normal cases with respect to previous plane, the force is acting on the perpendicular to the previous plane, S is equal to M into G. So that angle of inclination is now theta. So due to that, with respect to the inclined plane, the force acting on that uh, vehicle, vehicle is S is equal to M G into cos theta. So this is what I have already explained in that previous rolling resistance, F is equal to M into G into cos theta. Finally, we included with the rolling resistance constant. So now this is the case of F is equal to M into G into uh, cos theta. So normally this F, now as this plane is inclined at an angle of theta, so F is equal to Mg has the two component, that is one is perpendicular F is equal to M into G in the cos theta. Another one is horizontal component with respect to the new inclined plane, that is called as Fg is equal to Mg in the sin theta. So due to the weight and due to the inclination of that moving a hill climb, uh, inclination, force will act on this vehicle it will drag the vehicle to move forward uh, move backward that is called as dragging gradient force fg is equal to mg into sin theta at the same time as we know when this uh, rolling resistance is what in terms of cos theta so when the angle is zero we will get more effect of rolling resistance at the same time when the when the angle is 90 degree there is no for effect of rolling resistance. This is gradient <coughs> force is just opposite of the rolling resistance force. Here Ft is equal to mg into sin theta. Whenever the vehicle is moving, the climbing the hill or coming down from the hill, there is having the impact of 
rolling gradient force f m g in the sin theta so m whenever sin theta angle of inclination is maximum 90 degree it will uh, gradient force is maximum that that time rolling resistance force is minimum so that uh, so whenever this vehicle is uh, coming down when, whenever the vehicle is in that uh, normal plane, there is no inclination of the movement of the plane, the move, move, plane of the movement, then that case, uh, our rolling resistance, gradient force will be minimum, zero. Rolling force will be zero. At the same time, rolling force will be maximum. So this is the difference between the gradient force and the rolling force. So rolling force and gradient force, aerodynamic force are all the opposing force. Then let me explain that uh, linear acceleration force. The linear acceleration force is the aiding force. That is we know already according to that uh, Newton's second law, linear acceleration equal to mass in the acceleration. Acceleration is rate of change of velocity with respect to change so whenever the velocity is changed automatically that linear acceleration force will come into picture otherwise that linear acceleration will be zero when they when whenever there is a rate of change of accelerate velocity with respect to time then there is a cause of uh, it took it cause that linear acceleration force so this is the aiding force of attractive effect then next one is angular acceleration as like our we are using motor and uh, rotating parts and all so due to that we know torque is equal to j into uh, torque is equal to j into d omega by dt so how we can write speed speed is nothing but velocity divided by uh, that radius so that we can write the j by r into dv divided by dt so with this we can conclude that for ang angular acceleration is nothing but torque divided by radius so 1 by r square into dv by dt so this angular angular acceleration force it will be also there only when there is a rate of change of velocity with respect to time this also aiding forces so like the next slide we can we can come to know when the car is moving the velocity of v which is shown in that uh, slide so there is having a aerodynamic force this is the opposing force then rolling resistance force that also the opposing force then uh, gradient force also opposing force at the same time we have linear acceleration and angular acceleration force are the aiding forces so these are all the total forces acting on this vehicle or not only electrical vehicle normal vehicle so the tractive effort has to overcome these are all the dynamic effect so that is why the total tractive force towards the direction of the velocity of the vehicle so it will overcome so what is some of some forces are fad plus fg plus fr are all the aiding forces fla plus faa are the uh, that uh, opposing force sorry uh, fad and fge fr are the opposing forces then fla and faa are the they are aiding forces so accordingly, the total tractive effort is the sum of all the forces, rolling resistance force, gradient force, aerodynamic force, F, uh, linear acceleration force and angular acceleration force. So with this, this first three terms is are called as opposing force, remaining two terms are called as aiding force. We can summarize with the formula, total tractive effort is nothing but first two one component is uh, rolling resistance with respect to rolling resistance constant mu or r. Second one is gradient force. Third one is uh, aerodynamic force. So that is uh, with respect to aerodynamic constant CD. Then finally end up with angular and linear acceleration force. So these are all the total dynamic effects of any vehicle, normal electrical vehicle as well. So with this, that's, I would like to conclude uh, today's uh, presentation.
today's presentation so then the next class i am going to come with i am, I am planning to come with uh, different uh, concepts in the electrical vehicle uh, especially for the, how the charging station will be and how the uh, how that um, uh, battery management system everything i am i am planning to take it in the next lecture so i hope it is very helpful so those who are interested uh, with this uh, this the way of teaching and way of learning kindly subscribe this channel and give a comment on it for future rectification i hope you under this more so much understandable all the concept whatever we have learned till today uh, wish you all the best thank you